Hey everyone, I'm Ava and welcome back to Delightful Dolls. Today I'm doing something very different from what I usually do on my channel. Of course, it's still doll related, but basically if you don't already know who Olivia Rodrigo is, she is an amazing artist that has recently blown up everywhere. She recently released an album called Sour and I love it so so much. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to try to recreate the look she is going on in the album cover. And even if you don't know Olivia Rodrigo or aren't as big as a fan as I am, I still hope you enjoy the video and still enjoy watching me try to recreate this look. Sorry for me rambling on, but anyways, now that you know what's going on in the video, let's get right on into it. The first thing I want to start off with is the top she's wearing in the photo. It's like this fluffy pink tank top thing and I think it looks adorable. So we're going to try to recreate it in miniature. I looked through my fabric and fleece would definitely be the perfect kind of material for this top. Except I only have white fleece. So you know what that means. We're going to have to get a little bit creative. Of course, knowing my luck, I don't have any red or pink fabric dye laying around, but we're gonna try to use food coloring instead. I actually did a practice piece earlier, as you can see here. It's hard to tell on camera, but it definitely did come out more pink. You can see the difference here. But we're gonna try to repeat this pinkness going on with this larger piece of fleece. To start this dyeing process, I'm just going to dip this fleece into some water just to get it nice and soaked. I removed all the excess water. And before we get onto the next step, I'm gonna put on some rubber gloves just because food coloring can get a little bit messy. That is tight. <laughs> oh my. So I kind of broke that one, but it doesn't really matter because we just need to use the finger part of it. But that doesn't look very aesthetic. Whatever. <laughs> I have some red food coloring and I'm gonna need quite a lot of this. This might seem overkill, but I'm just gonna literally cover this entire thing with red drops because most of it does wash away afterwards. Once I have a decent amount there, I'm going to kind of scrunch it together just to get the color all around. I tried my best to get the color evenly spread around, but it's honestly really hard. Next, I'm gonna just put a little bit of water inside to let it soak for a little bit. I'm gonna let that sit there for a few minutes. Also keep in mind that I'm using so much food coloring because this is fleece. If this was cotton, it would dye so much easier, but fleece is definitely a lot more stubborn. Finally, I'm gonna go and take the actual fleece piece and rinse it off under some water to get all the excess dye out. Here it is, and you can see next to some white fleece that it definitely turned pink. Unfortunately, it's kind of splotchy and definitely not like very solid all the way throughout. But because this is miniature, I'm hoping we won't really notice that. We'll see. Also, even though I was using gloves, I somehow managed to still dye my hands. I don't even know. I just, it was bound to happen. So just try to ignore that if you can. I'm going to cut out a strip from this fabric that's about probably a little bit more than an inch wide. And that can wrap around a doll with a little bit of overlap in the back. I then have some Velcro and I'm going to sew one side of the Velcro to the front over here and the other side of the Velcro on the back over here and i actually ended up sewing them at a bit of an angle so that when we place it on the doll it'll be a little bit more fitted and i'm just gonna cut off the excess i place it on the doll i'm gonna cut a long strip from the leftover fabric we have and i'm gonna make this really skinny i'm going to pull this piece tight so that it's almost like a cord now and it's really thin. I measure how much I would need to go over the doll's shoulder and cut it. And cutting a second one the same length. And then I'm gonna carefully glue them in place. Okay. 
here's the top all completed and yeah that is super cute ideally i think it would have looked better if it was a little bit more pink but either way i'm still pretty happy with how it looks next up i want to work on her bottoms it's extremely hard to tell what exactly she's wearing in the photo i tried to look around and find out but i literally have no idea so i'm going to assume it's a skirt to be honest it's probably pants but that would be a lot of work and we're just gonna go ahead and pretend like it's not and we're gonna do a skirt <laughs> don't hate me I know I'm probably wrong, but it would just make things a lot easier for me, especially considering that I'm going to try to draw out the entire design. We'll see how that goes. I have some like 100% cotton white fabric and I'm going to measure a piece that is five and a half inches by three inches. And then I cut that out. I'm going to now fold over and sew down the top long edge. I'm going to do that with my sewing machine. As for the bottom edge, we'll get to that later. I just really wanted to hem this over now so that when I draw on the design, I can make sure it looks as similar as possible to the original photo. For now, we're going to try to draw out a plaid design. I have ruler and black and blue markers and I'm just gonna go ahead and try to recreate a pattern as similar as I can to the one in the photo. It's hard to tell what it really looks like. So I'm just gonna kind of wing it and hope it looks good. <laughs> I'm aware this probably looks nothing like the actual thing, but I think it's about as good as it's gonna get, so we're just gonna work with it. I wrap it around the doll with the wrong side facing out and match up the ends in the back. And then I'm gonna make a little mark where I want a little slit to go. I just thought it'd be kind of a fun thing to add on. And then I'm going to cut on that line. From here, you could fold over and sew down the edges, but I'm personally just going to glue it because I don't want the thread to mess up any of my design I made. So I'm just gonna glue this all and make sure to also fold over the sides of the slit using my trusty glue bin. I'm now gonna fold this in half so the good side is on the inside. And I'm going to sew up this edge about halfway from the bottom. Once I have that sewed up, I slide it onto the doll to make sure I sewed it tight enough. I cut off the excess fabric. Now what I'm gonna do is fold over these top sides and sew them down so that will have a nice clean edge. Then I flip that inside out and slip it on the doll. And make sure the two pieces can slightly overlap in the back. Now I could use some Velcro so that the back can open and close, but I'm actually gonna use these little button snap fasteners. I love using these things, especially for small overlaps like this. I'm gonna sew one side to the front and the other side on the inside. So it'll look something like that. And of course, I'll be sewing that with a needle and thread. Once those are sewed on, I'm going to slip that onto the doll and button it up in the back. So I think the outfit overall is pretty close or as close as we're going to get to the original outfit. Now I want to actually give her some accessories similar to Olivia. To start, I have some necklaces that I'm going to give her. I also just want to mention I am aware that this doll looks nothing like Olivia Rodrigo. I'm just using her because she is the closest looking doll I have to her. As for her hands, Olivia does have some black nail polish. So to give our doll some black nail polish, I'm going to mix a little bit of glossy Mod Podge with some black acrylic paint. And then using a toothpick, I'm just going to paint her nails. Another thing Olivia has going on with her hands is a lot of rings. 
Obviously Barbie fingers are not split apart. So what I like to do to give the illusion that the doll is wearing rings, I have this like shiny metallic duct tape stuff. I don't even know what it's called. And I like to cut a very thin strip of that. I cut a very small piece from that. Like literally, look how tiny that is. <laughs> and then I place that onto the doll's finger. to give the illusion of a ring. And I'm gonna do that a few times on both hands because Olivia is wearing a lot of rings. I also wanna add this little like sticker gem thing to her ring finger over here. And an orange one on her middle finger over here. Lastly, I do think it'd be kind of fun to put some stickers on her face like Olivia has. I have some small like gem sparkly stickers and some other kind of stickers. But to also kind of make my own stickers, I have a bunch of washi tape and I carefully cut out pieces from the washi tape. Okay, that's very tiny, but you get the idea. And then I place that onto the doll's face. And I'm just gonna repeat that with a whole bunch of stickers covering her entire face. This might take a while. <laughs> I think I did a pretty good job considering it is such a small space to work with. Obviously it's not as nicely compacted and just doesn't look as good as the original photo. But like we know, working with miniature things is definitely a little bit more challenging. I know what some of you are probably thinking, what about her tongue that sticks out and says sour on it? I don't really think I'm gonna be able to give her a tongue. I'm not really sure how that would work. If you guys have any ideas, comment them below how I could try to give a doll like a tongue sticking out, but I'm probably just gonna keep it like this. Okay, here's the complete look. I'm actually super happy with how this turned out. I think it represents Olivia a lot more than I thought it would. Of course, nothing's perfect, but like, I'm pretty happy with it. I just thought overall it was a really fun challenge for me and hopefully you guys enjoyed watching me do this and maybe even recreate this yourself because even if you aren't a huge Olivia Rodrigo fan, this outfit is still adorable so you could definitely just recreate that for your dolls. If you guys want to see me do more like Olivia Rodrigo look recreations or like any celebrity in general, comment below and let me know because yeah, this was a ton of fun. Make sure to comment down below which part of this whole look is your favorite. And if you haven't already, go and listen to Olivia's new album, Sour. It is honestly amazing. Now, before we end today's video, the shoutouts for today go to Yuki Abe, Coco's Butterfly, and Lauren42711. Thank you so, so much for supporting the channel. And remember, if you want a chance to give a shout out, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell, and comment down below with the hashtag DD Squad, and you'll have a chance to give a shout out in the next video. Thank you so much for watching today's video, and I do want to say thank you so, so much for 200,000 subscribers. That is literally crazy. I am so, so happy and grateful. I will be doing something special for 200,000 subscribers soon, so you can be ready for that. But if you aren't already, do make sure to subscribe because I really do appreciate it. And once again, thank you so, so much for 200,000 subscribers. I never thought we would have come this far. Anyways, I'll see all of you in the next video. Bye!